Let us begin today's video with an image of a young couple in love standing next to the world's most productive serial killer. It's me, Mario! But what if he one day crossed the wrong turtle? <laughs> and was finally made to pay for his crimes. For this project, we're gonna have to make a couple of different models. One Mario, one angry turtle, and a card. Now, I've never actually worked with polymer clay before and not really painted anything for 20 years. Since the algorithm loves audience retention, let's start with Mario. I tried making a quick sketch to base my proportions on, though it did kind of end up looking like it wants to brainwash me into doing crimes. Mr. Super's Wolverine brand skeleton is made from two pieces of aluminium wire held together by a bit of thinner wire. I then wrapped the whole thing in a thin copper wire to give the clay Mario meat something to hold onto. To bulk out Mario's head, I'm starting off with a piece of armature wire that I pack in tin foil. For no other reason than that it arrived first, I started blocking out Mario's head using the cosplay. While his head and face isn't especially complicated shape-wise, he does have a face that basically everyone watching has intimate knowledge of how it looks, so I'm doing my best to try to map out all the proportions and slowly add bits of clay to stay within the framework of acceptable Mario-ness. What's terrifying about this part of the process is that for everything I add, he just keeps looking creepier and creepier. Using my sculpting tools, I keep adding to his pinchable hamster cheeks as well as start building up his eye area. To be able to carry around his freakishly oversized head, Mario Mario is going to need a real thick chunker of a body. I start bulking out the bigger shapes to get the big proportions and the silhouette right-ish. While his Arnold-sized baby belly is nice, I know what at least half of you freaks are here for. Mama mia! This is however a family show, so let's cover up his sinful lower half with his iconic denim overalls. His shoes are basically just simple bean shapes, which I'll drape with a traditional Canadian wormy dealy to build up the bottom of his pant legs. As his torso already has the thickness I'm looking for, I'll just cut out the edge pieces of his overalls and smooth out the transitions. To make sure his pants don't fall off during his many murder jumps, I'll also add some handy shoulder straps. For shooting his fireballs, Mario is gonna need some hands. After cutting out four little fingies, I poke and prod and add all the bumps and folds. Now, of course, to make sure he doesn't leave any fingerprints at any of his myriad crime scenes, Mario does wear gloves at all times, which means they don't have to be super detailed. After giving them a basic pose, I shove the hand onto the aluminum bone stumps and blend it into the lower arm, as well as add the glove opening rim thing, whatever that's called. Now we're all about tra- all about traffic safety around these parts, so our cart is going to need some kind of headlight. I don't have any place on the cart to put the flashlight, but I'll have to find somewhere to shove it. Oh no! It's me, Mario! Whoop, come here. Remember when I said half of you were here for that cake? Well, it's time for what the other half of you came for. The Sculpey finally arrived, so I could start blocking out the main volumes of the foot. As we all know, the Mario species only has four toes per foot. Using different sizes of ball stylus tools, I poke and prod to shape the foot fingies, toenails, and other sexy details. I mean, super normal platonic details. <clears throat> oh, close. Sorry, one second, I just have to... <sighs> Sorry about that. I'll use this dental tool to carve in and form a couple of folds in the pants and... Sorry, Mario, could you stop moving or I... Sorry, where was I? Uh, yes. Smooth out other parts before adding a couple of cute pre-baked buttons to his shoulder straps. I'm adding more clay noodles to make more cloth folds around Mario's groinal area, 
Before I brush the whole model with a healthy smattering of isopropyl alcohol to soften and smooth out the clay to get rid of a lot of the crumbs and fingerprints. Using this super thin loop tool, I carved in thin seam lines before screwing his little goblin foot into place and smoothing it into the bottom of the leg. <laughs> Mario's head still looks terrifying, and I'm pretty sure it's because he's not wearing a hat. I start blocking out the main shape by smooshing lumps of Sculpey onto his now baked and hardened bald skull. I uh, use my finger tools to gingerly shape a flat piece of clay into what will be the bill of his hat. As everyone knows, Mario is also colorblind, so to make sure he doesn't accidentally put on green Mario's hat, his is gonna need a name tag. I start off by hammering this round piece of plastic that I have no idea what actually it used to be into a sheet of clay to make the circular base patch. The upside down W I cut from a thinner sheet of clay before gluing it onto the patch using a few dabs of bacon bond. To better hear the lament of his victims, a Mario needs to have big honking ears. I smoosh them onto the baked head before poking at them with different size ball tools. Now this kind of still looks like baby Mario choking on a flashlight and it's making me uncomfortable. So I'll start on making all the hairy bits to hopefully start making it look more like the totally adult plumber we all know and fear. At this stage I'm starting to get kind of scared that this is never going to actually look like Mario, but I figured if that's the case I'm at least going to do my darnest to make the best bootleg wish.com version of Mario that I can. It's -a me! After blocking out all the main hair clumps, I go over everything with a brush dipped in isopropyl alcohol, not just to get rid of crumbs and to smooth things out, but because the fumes make the paint go away and the brush strokes leave a fine hair texture in the clay as long as I make sure to brush the right direction. Now I've seen quite a few Mario projects here on YouTube over the years, and the main takeaway was usually it's not going to look like Mario at all before you add his luscious lip tickler. And they were not wrong, the Tom Selleck soup strainer makes all the difference. While Mario might not have a soul, his shoes do. I cut the pieces out of a flat clay sheet, and since we will actually see the bottom of his feet, I also added some wear and tear using a pointy sculpting tool. And to hold up Mario's wildly oversized head, he'll need a thick big boy neck. To cover his now exorcist level twisted neck, we'll just add the top of his collared plumber shirt by first making the shirt neck, then adding and blending in the folded over collars after. And with that most important couture element covered, we're done with the model part for Mario. To start building our turtle cart, I'm gonna need a template for... There we go, for cutting out the floor skeleton from these popsicle sticks. I'm sorry, that made a real and totally random mess. I'll glue them all to these popsicle cross brackets and weigh them down using this old paperweight I found in the trash. Is car gone get car bones of car bone, or at least of aluminum wire. I cut out and bent the separate parts out of thick wire, while the thin copper wire serves to both tie the bits together and hopefully give the clay something to grab onto. Let's go! Oh no! I covered the popsicle floor with these sinful sheets of clay, then to give it a nice metal grating texture, I figured I'd give making texture rollers a try. By poking the end of this drill bit into the clay, I should be able to make a negative shape that, when I roll it across the soft clay, should result in an inverse pattern on the floor. Now it kinda worked, but not to the extent that I needed, and it was really hard to line up the different imprints, so I had to go back over and fix it manually. I have yet again defiled the pasta maker and rolled out a few more thin sheets of Sculpey. I started by covering the frame of the cart in a thin layer that I then baked, Getting it to be smooth and to be the same thickness over the whole frame was really hard. So let's just say that worn and dented was always part of the concept. For the engine block, I crumble up some more tinfoil into something that resembles the final form. This needs to serve as both the rear wheel axle and to hold the exhaust pipes. 
Another sheet of forbidden clay lasagna plates gets cut into small pieces and used to cover up the tin foil engine before I went ham sandwich on it with the flat end of the sculpting tool to sharpen those edges and corners back up. The hex bit is not only good at rotating hex nuts, but also at making them. By poking the round end of my loop tool into the middle of them, not only do I get a secret stash of clay inside the handle that I can never retrieve, but also a perfect sized hole to slide these over the engine wire bits to serve as cool mechanical looking attachment points. I etched in some panel lines to give it more detail before the whole thing gets baked, sanded, then another layer of clay. According to Wikipedia, engines also have bolts, so I rolled a thin spaghetti of clay which I then cut into a bunch of little coin shaped bits, gave them an angel's kiss of bacon bond and stuck them everywhere I figured bolts would live. Then I used super glue to attach Okay, I know what you're thinking. Hey, what happened to the thick floor with the pattern that pokes outwards? Well, that one got sick and had to go live on a farm upstate. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll do it. And with the engine in place, it's time for wheels. For the wheel meat, I'm rolling a bit of tin foil around a piece of armature wire, which hopefully will make sure I end up with a hole that fits the engine axle. That then gets rolled in layers of Sculpey, first to the thickness of the hub, then slightly narrower for the tire rubber. I then used a series of sculpting tools to round out the hubcap opening, and get those sweet sweet bevels, and doing an extremely sloppy job of carving out the outside of the hubcap. For the front tires, I'll need to build a separate attachment point, starting with these curved brackets to hold it in place. After baking, these should just stick on her per- These should just- these to make tiny bolts for the top panel i tried giving it a gentle kiss with the liquid sculpey bottle leaving behind just a tiny drop of clay soup then all i had to do was glue both sides onto the frame and were ready to get started on everyone's favorite turtle for the hero of our story we'll start by building the body by covering this tinfoil turtle egg with cosplay and as soon as it's decently egg-shaped, we'll make it extra smooth by brushing it with isopropyl alcohol. The belly side of Koopa's mobile home is divided into these horizontal sections. For the shell, I cut out an approximately sized piece of clay from a sheet that I rolled to the desired shell thickness, a bit of smoothing, cutting and finger smooshing later, and it's ready to start blocking out the lines for the hexagonal shell cells. I carved out these perplexing hexes using the same tool as on the front before lining the circumference of the shell with this medium thick clay noodle. This non-ninja fully adult turtle's head is made up out of a few different forms. Since it curves in on itself quite a bit, it was a lot easier to block out the beak separately before attaching it to the head. To make his eyes, I shoved this heart first into the head, then I poked at them until they looked like fingertips, before adding two thin strips of clay for eyelids. While all of this head business was going on, the body finished baking in the oven and is ready for Koopa to exercise his Bowser-given rights to bear arms. Or in this case, I guess they would be turtle arms. Even though KT can't compete with Mario's dumper rear end, he at least has a tail. Which I guess Mario also kinda does, but not for long. Foreshadowing. The legs are made just like the arms by squishing some lumps of clay around a poorly posed wire twisted wire, except with a slightly more shoe shaped blob at the end. As a proud juggalo, KT needs a hatchet to run with, which I cut out of a pasta piece of clay and threw right into the oven. Fresh out of the oven, I sanded the edges smooth before using a screwdriver to chisel out the cutting edge bevel of the hatchet. Let's see if we can find something to test if our newly forged blade is up to snuff. Mario? I attached the hatchet to the hand nub with a little glob of clay before adding all the little turtle fingies. 
the other hand will be grabbing the steering wheel, so that gets pre-post before baking to make sure that it'll fit later. With all the parts baked, it's now assemble time. The neck gets blended into the head, then given some zoologically accurate neck wrinkles. The armholes get filled with clay, and when the arms are shoved in there, I could just carve away the overflow pit meat, and I should have a pretty decent bond when it's all rebaked. Ugh, pit meat. So, remember when I said cast clay is great and flexible after baking as long as you don't rebake it after bending? Yeah, I rebaked it after bending. Luckily, it's an easy fix, and I can then just repeat the process for the legs, and we're finally ready to add some color to this so far very gray video. Now, if you're a seasoned painter, I should probably add a trigger warning to the start of this section. I have not painted anything since I was a, a very cool 13 year old painting Warhammers. Case in point, the first thing I did was trying to paint yellow over a dark grey, which even after 98 coats still looked terrible. A quick google search later and I learned about gesso. Gesso? The car feet get primed with black acrylics, I then give it a quick directional dry brush and edge highlight with a lighter grey to give my wobbly wheel some detail and wear before giving the hubcaps a couple of coats of the same yellow as on the frame. Mario Kart is nothing if not metal. So let's add a layer of bolt gun metal to all the metallic parts. The exhaust pipes get a thin coat of copper on top, as does this panel that I forgot to add bolts to, and which now looks like some weird pee. I decided to add a dark wash to the hubcaps to give it some contrast, then immediately regretted it, tried desperately to remove it before deciding it's part of the look now and moved on. The metals got washed with Nuln oil and given a slight edge wear through a silver dry brush. I gave the frame a gloss varnish for that clear coat look and I tickled the tips of the tailpipes with a dry black for exhaust soot stains. Our brave turtle gets a white base coat before all the skin parts are painted with a warm mix of yellow and some beige-ish color that I can't remember the name of. His elongated abs are painted in the same fancy named beige color, while the shell gets about a million coats of this dark green color. But I can't help feeling that something's missing. I'll have to poke some breathing holes into Koopa's face. I waited until now for structural integrity and definitely not because I forgot. Another thing I did for structural integrity was to not paint the inside of the mouth black during the priming stage, but I figure if I just fill a pipette with thin paint, I should be able to just squirt it into his mouth and get a perfect result without messing up the surrounding area and needing about 47 coats of yellow to fix it. Excellent. Having learned nothing from the hubcap debacle, I start adding washes to the arms and torso to add a little breakup. The edges on the shell cells gets a dusting of a lighter green, which took quite a while cause there is like 50 edges on that thing. The eyes get another coat of white before I start painting the iris using a trick I'm pretty sure I stole from Ace of Clay. I first paint a full layer of this dark teal color before going back in but slightly smaller with a lighter teal. The pupil is just a pure black oval or at least a poor attempt at one. I don't know much about painting, but at least I know that metallics look better over a black base coat. I paint the whole hatchet in bolt gun metal, cover it in null oil for that vintage murder weapon look, then go back over the cutting edge and other hard edges with a lighter silver. For that extra glossy shine, I'll cover the eyeballs in UV resin, using a toothpick to push it into all the little nooks and crannies, and with a quick blast of UV light, that's it for Koopa. For Mario's signature red shirt and hat, I briefly forget the existence of white gesso, a sin for which I will pay by doing about a billion coats to get it somewhat okay looking. Luckily I quickly remembered my past sins and covered the rest in the good white stuff before starting to paint the overalls and the face. I've now checked what the beige-ish color from earlier was called and it's Naples yellow. Plumber Boy's skin gets a mix of that and a little bit of red for a bit more warmth. While this little piggy gets a pure coat of straight Naples yellow. And you. And you. 
once again, I spite the gods by attempting to use a brownish wash to add some shading to the skin. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but at least I had enough saved up regret at this stage to go in sparingly. I was missing a bit of blood flow to parts of the face, so I went back over with an almost dry brush with pure red color. I then once again panicked and tried to blend it back down, but this time my skin tone mix ended up being way too pale and actually made it worse. Excellent. All of Mario's hair growth is first painted in black acrylic. Everything then gets a light dark gray dry brush to bring out some shape and give the hair a little breakup. His eyes gets the same treatment as we gave our turtle friend. Except this time I did a little more striation detail to the iris for that 2023 4K HDR photorealism. I've now watched a few videos on how to be less horrible at painting and as any professional I've decided that the actual problem is the equipment, not me, and ordered myself a wet palette. I used my newfound powers to dry brush and edge highlight both the red cloth as well as his blue overalls. Ideally, I'd have wired an LED into the flashlight, but this video has already taken way too long to make and I'm so sleepy. But I did want it to at least look kind of glowy and I found this bottle of Vallejo game color labeled fluorescent, which sounded promising. Did I get fluorescent and phosphorescent mixed up? Maybe. The shoulder strap buttons keeping Mario PG-13 gets a quick coat of silver and then Mario's eyes gets a layer of UV resin for shine. As we all know this Goomba stomping monster is incapable of tears and feelings. But wait, what was that? Hi, this is Lars from the future. While I was editing I realized I'd missed a whole folder of footage of making this thing. I made the flagpole by wrapping twisted wire in clay. I built the main mass of the tail first, then I cut out a lot of little clay triangles, one per tuft of fur. These then got glued to the tail one at a time using liquid Sculpey, each one getting a little bit of hair strand detail carved into them. The rope is a thin worm of clay that I lightly rolled a sculpting knife across to make a rough twisting pattern before being tied around the tail and the flagpole. After a white base coat, all parts were painted, given a few different washes, and highlighted wherever it made sense. And prego, one decorative tanuki tail pennant. Now at this stage I was pretty much ready to just put the thing on the table and call it a day. But then I realized that that would be a terrible waste of an opportunity not only to make this video take even longer to make, but also to do a cool remake of everyone's favorite Mario Kart track, Rainbow Road. I measured out a bunch of these stir sticks from the downstairs hardware store and committed more unforgivable pasta crimes by cutting them down to size using the spaghetti machine as a sawhorse. Now I'm nothing if not a wish.com bargain bin version of Studson Studio, so I also built these cardboard section dividers from a pizza box that I found in the trash. For the glass floor I'm using a poorly cut acrylic sheet, but I need to diffuse the light from underneath so I'm going to give it a good sanding on one side, then using the base as a guide to draw the dividing line from underneath using a thick marker. The original also has this cool grid pattern. Some sort of plastic grid canvas thing would have been awesome, but since I don't actually have any, I'll settle for drawing way more lines than I care to count with a thinner marker to get at least some of the same effect. Then I just need to paint the whole thing black before gluing on the glass flooring. I'm using a mix of pre-trained popsicle and stir sticks around the edges, which both gives a bit more structural detail and it also hides the horrendous cutting job that I did on the acrylic. In my garden I've grown this little field of cosplay balls that I can cut into twice the amount of cosplay semi-balls that I can glue onto all the side brackets to make them look more like bolted on metal plates than stir sticks. These all get painted, washed, and highlighted the same way as we did with the cart engine. This has taken so long that the idea of now soldering 12 LEDs is giving me the hives. Luckily I can just do this 
and toss a bunch of them into each hole and call it kind of okay. Now all that is left is to use a mountain of glue and wire to tie all the different parts together and we're finally ready for the part I don't know what to call without stealing someone else's catchphrase. Thank you to anyone still watching at this point. This project was quite the learning experience for me and while it was a lot of head scratching work, it definitely has me excited to get started on the next one. An extra big thanks to everyone who watched and even more so all the ones who commented on my last video. You have no idea how motivating it is to see that there are actually people out there weird enough to enjoy the work that you've put so much effort into and it's very much appreciated. And if you're among the 98% of those viewers who isn't subscribed, I do hope the past half hour of poorly constructed Mario jokes help push you over the line. See you soon for more of whatever this is.